Hello and welcome back to Magma Storm. Archaeologists work to provide humanity with an understanding of our ancient past. However, from time to time, they come across a site so unusual that it leaves them at a loss for words when they try to explain how ancient people could have built such a structure. In this video, we'll explore some of the world's most mysterious megalithic sites, from a stone block in Lebanon that weighs over 1,500 tons to signs of ancient machinery in South America. Here are nine unexplainable megalithic sites of the ancient world. Number 9. Ollantaytambo, Peru First up on our list, we are heading to the ancient site of Ollantaytambo, a complex located 3,000 meters above the sea in the middle of Peru's Sacred Valley region. The area was once home to a culture known as the Inca. The Inca were the largest civilization in South America before the Spanish colonized the area in the 16th century, bringing about a collapse in the indigenous way of life. At the site of Ollantaytambo, one can observe some of the most impressive megaliths in the world. Hard granite blocks were cut and polished to a fine finish before being used in the construction of megalithic walls and structures. Many of these enormous blocks weigh tens of tons, with the largest being estimated to weigh as much as 80 tons. The megalithic walls of Ollantaytambo are constructed with stones that sit perfectly together without the use of mortar or any kind of bonding. The joints are so tight that not even a human hair can fit between the cracks. All of this bears witness to a high level of structural engineering that once existed in the area. Scholars and researchers who have visited the site all agree that whoever built the monuments, whether it be the Inca or an earlier civilization, had a level of expertise that parallels our modern techniques. Many scholars also agree that the cutting of the blocks had to have employed tools made of quartz, diamond, or cobalt glass. However, the Incas did not have any of these materials, nor has any evidence of such tools turned up at the site. The building methods of the period remain a mystery to this day, and the site itself receives thousands of visitors each month who flock to see the achievement of this lost culture. Number 8. The Unfinished Obelisk of Aswan The ancient Egyptians were able to carve some of the toughest stones on the planet and turn them into unique pieces of art. One particular style of monument the Egyptians are celebrated for is their enormous obelisks. These stone towers are engineering masterpieces and can be found all across Egypt, typically in pairs in front of major temple complexes. While many of these obelisks weigh a few hundred tons, one unfinished megalith blew the minds of archaeologists when they first came across it in the early 20th century. As archaeologists were working at an ancient quarry in the city of Aswan, they came across the largest obelisk ever discovered. This unique obelisk has been estimated to weigh a staggering 1,200 tons and is cut from a single piece of tough granite. Had this megalithic tower been erected, it would have stood at a height of over 42 meters, making it by far the largest obelisk ever constructed by the Egyptians. To put this into retrospect, the largest surviving obelisk, the Lateran Obelisk, is only 10 meters tall and originally weighed around 413 tons. Researchers have suggested that the obelisk was abandoned after an enormous crack appeared at its center. This unfinished obelisk is a testimony to the level of structural engineering and craftsmanship that existed in ancient Egypt. For if this piece had been finished, most scholars agree that they have no idea how the Egyptians planned to lift it from the quarry, transport it, and then erect it considering it weighed over a thousand tons. Number 7. The Temple of Baalbek One of the strangest sites in the world is Baalbek, Lebanon, where we find the mysterious ruins of a 2,000-year-old Roman temple dedicated to Jupiter. Located at an altitude of around 1,100 meters in the Beka Valley, we find some of the largest stones ever cut and placed by humans. While the Temple of Jupiter was most likely a construction of the Roman period, the foundation stones of this structure may have a much more ancient past. Three of these foundation stones, known collectively as the Trilithon, have been estimated to weigh over 1,000 tons each and have puzzled archaeologists and researchers ever since they were first discovered. The megalithic Trilithon stones have been cut with a high level of precision, 
and moved into their position almost effortlessly. Over the years, various debates centered on the idea of how any culture could have moved such large stones has taken place in the academic world. One prominent researcher and journalist, Graham Hancock, had this to say about the megalithic stones. I believe these huge megaliths long predate the construction of the Temple of Jupiter and are likely to be 12,000 or more years old. Contemporaneous with the megalithic site of Gobekli Tepe in Turkey, I suggest we are looking at the handiwork of the survivors of a lost civilization, that the Romans built their Temple of Jupiter on a pre-existing 12,000 years old megalithic foundation. If this isn't enough to leave you in awe at this unusual site, archaeologists and researchers working in the area also uncovered the largest stone ever discovered at a quarry just under a kilometer away. The limestone quarry houses two massive building blocks that never made it to the temple. One of the stones weighs approximately 1,240 tons, while the other, known as the Hajar al-Hibla, or the Stone of the Pregnant Woman, weighs about 1,000 tons. But a team of German archaeologists made a shocking discovery, for underneath the Stone of the Pregnant Woman, an unfinished stone has been estimated to weigh approximately 1,650 tons, making it the largest known stone block from antiquity. The sheer size of the stones at this site has led to a fair amount of theories over the years. From local legends of the biblical Cain building the temple to hide from God, to the work of giants under the command of Nimrod, some even suggest King Solomon ordered the demonic jinn to move the stones. Either way, it's tough to theorize how any civilization besides our own with heavy-duty machinery could move a stone block weighing 1,650 tons. Number 6. Stonehenge Stonehenge in England is one of the most famous ancient sites in the world, with close to a million people visiting this stone circle each year. While the area has been a site of interest for explorers and researchers since the medieval period, even today we are unsure of how these megalithic blocks were placed in a clearly organized fashion. Scholars have been fascinated for centuries by the builders of this ancient site and how they were able to move such huge stones across the English countryside. At the site, you will find two types of stone, large sarsen stones and smaller blue stones also known as presolite. On average, many of the sarsen stones weigh anywhere from 25 to 30 tons and were brought from the Marlborough Downs, which lies around 35 kilometers from Stonehenge. This would have been an extremely difficult task, as at least 15 of these megalithic stones would have to have been moved up and down hills on their way to the site. While this is considered an incredible accomplishment by the Stone Age inhabitants of England, What's even more impressive is where the presolite bluestones were brought from. The presolite blocks weigh anywhere from 2 to 5 tons, which is equivalent to an adult-sized elephant, and were moved from the Preseli Hills in Wales, around 200 kilometers away. Even today, in a car, this would take the average driver around 4 hours to complete the journey. All of this information has continued to baffle researchers over the years as they try to uncover how Stone Age peoples moved these blocks across the country. It's been suggested that the builders used sleds and rollers made from tree trunks, but the scale of manufacturing seems almost impossible when you consider the sheer distance these stones would have had to have traveled on rollers. If nothing else, it shows the clear level of civilization that existed on the British Isles during the Stone Age. They were a unified culture that had the ability to permit a large portion of its population to focus on large-scale operations that spanned the country. Number 5. The King's Chamber The Great Pyramid of Giza is one of the most well-known sites in the world. Its sheer size and the structural engineering that went into its construction have fascinated scholars for centuries. Over 2.2 million precisely cut sandstone blocks, weighing on average around 2 tons each, were used in the construction of the outer shell, giving it its unique pyramidal form. However, what often goes unnoticed is the level of craftsmanship that's contained within the pyramid itself, which to some surpasses that of the exterior. 
Within the Great Pyramid, there are various chambers and passages. One of the most well-known is the King's Chamber, which lies in the central area of the structure. Above this, archaeologists discovered five further chambers, and quite possibly one of the greatest marvels of ancient Egypt. These chambers are roofed and floored in enormous granite beams that weigh about 70 tons each. There are hundreds of these beams, each cut and placed precisely into position. To put this into perspective, a 70-ton beam is equivalent to 35 modern SUVs. The granite beams that make up the chambers have been elevated to a height of more than 350 feet within the pyramid's core. It's extremely difficult for archaeologists to explain just how the ancient Egyptians were able to do this without the use of modern cranes and pulleys. Even the idea of leverage seems highly improbable to many who have looked into its construction. While it's possible the builders may have constructed a ramp to maneuver the blocks up, basic physics tells us that trying to move a 70-ton stone up a ramp that exceeds 10 degrees is almost impossible. To this day, it remains one of the most intriguing mysteries of ancient Egypt. Number 4. Karnak Stones of France For the next site on our tour, we are heading to Brittany, on the western coast of France. Here we find an ancient site known as Karnak, home to the largest concentration of megalithic monuments in the world. Over 100 individual monuments dot the landscape, including burial mounds, stone tombs, and enclosures. But the most fascinating of all is the linear arrangements of megalithic standing stones. The size of the standing stones at Karnak greatly varies, with some being no more than a meter high and weighing a few tons, to the largest standing at six and a half meters tall and weighing several hundred tons. It's been estimated that there are over 3,000 standing stones in the area which were cut from local rock and erected by the pre-Celtic peoples of western France. Those who have visited the site are met with a sense of awe as they observe the endless rows of stones that lie before them. While these stones aren't dressed or precisely cut like the others on our list, the sheer amount of them has baffled archaeologists for centuries. Archaeologists and researchers are unsure as to why this Stone Age culture would move and align so many stones in an abstract manner, nor can they explain how they had the manpower to do so, considering how difficult it would be to move one, never mind thousands. One theory put forth in recent years suggests that pyramids, stone monoliths, and geoglyphs that were constructed by ancient peoples around the world were used to map out territories that the builder considered their own. Ancient Japanese texts state that these territories were originally designated as the areas within which ancient scholars would teach man the spirituality and sciences of the cosmos. Yet, to this day, we have no definitive answers on what culture was behind this megalithic marvel on the coast of France. Number 3. The Megalithic Jars of Laos Lying scattered across the Xiang Koang Plain of Laos is one of Asia's most enigmatic archaeological finds. Here, archaeologists stumbled across an unusual amount of megalithic stone carved jars. These enormous rock-cut jars were first discovered back in 1930 and since then, they have turned up at various sites in Laos. Many of the stone jars are made of sandstone and stand around 1 to 3 meters tall. However, others are carved out of much harder stones, such as granite and limestone, and can be up to 3 meters tall. One of the major mysteries of the area is how these massive jars, some weighing more than 30 tons, were cut from the quarry and dragged to their current position some 10 kilometers away. Theories have suggested that the jars were dragged on wooden rollers and may have once been used for burial urns during the Iron Age. However, recent studies have shown that the megalithic jars are likely over 3,000 years old. The jars seem to have been manufactured with a considerable degree of knowledge. Many have suggested that iron tools were implemented in their construction, although no tools have ever been found near the site. According to a local legend, the jars were created by a race of giants who once inhabited the area. Their king needed a suitable place to store his rice wine. 
and thus, he created a plethora of these jars to do so. Unfortunately, this area is one of the most dangerous archaeological sites in the world. There are thousands of mines and unexploded bombs scattered across the plains, making it extremely difficult for researchers to investigate the jars. Thus, we may never get to the bottom of these unusual megalithic jars. Number 2. Puma Punku For our next site, we head back to South America, but this time to Bolivia where we find an ancient megalithic temple complex known as Puma Punku. This site lies on Lake Titicaca's southeastern shore, 12,600 feet above sea level on the Andes Mountains. Scattered across this site, we find a wide array of andesite blocks, precisely cut and shaped into unusual shapes and sizes. The site is part of a larger archaeological site known as Tiawanakua, yet the temple complex remains the most popular due to its unusual dispersal of megaliths. The original site would have been a terraced earthen mound, faced with the megalithic andesite and red sandstone blocks. Some of the larger sandstone blocks weigh well over 100 tons, with one slab being estimated at 131 tons. All of the megalithic stones were cut so precisely that they locked together without the use of any kind of mortar. On top of this, we see machine-like straight lines cut into the hard andesite and drilled holes in some of the stones. The technical finesse has amazed every researcher and geologist who has laid their eyes on the stones. Not even a razor blade can slide between some of the stones that are joined together. The most fascinating of all the megalithic stones are those now referred to as the H-blocks due to their unusual shape. These H-blocks show a level of precision that's close to what our modern machines could accomplish. One structural engineer who visited the site had this to say, in assembling the walls of Puma Punku, each stone was finally cut to interlock with the surrounding stones, and the blocks fit together like a puzzle, forming load-bearing joints without the use of mortar. One common engineering technique involves cutting the top of the lower stone at a certain angle and placing another stone on top of it, which was cut at the same angle. The precision with which these angles have been utilized to create flush joints indicates a highly sophisticated knowledge of stone cutting and a thorough understanding of descriptive geometry. Yet, according to outdated archaeological beliefs, this high level of craftsmanship was completed by a civilization with no writing system and was ignorant of the wheel's existence. Something clearly doesn't add up, and it will likely take a lot more archaeological investigation before we uncover the many mysteries of Puma Punku. Number 1. Gantia Malta Our final example of an unexplainable ancient site takes us to the Maltese island of Gozo. Here we find the world's second oldest standing structure, only being surpassed in antiquity by Gobekli Tepe in Turkey. The site consists of two major temples and a third incomplete structure. The Maltese word for the site, Gantia, means giantess and refers to local legends that infer the temples were built with a female giant. The folklore doesn't seem irrational to many who have laid their eyes on the megalithic limestone blocks that make up the temples, for some of the stones weigh over 50 tons. Archaeologists have dated the site to around 3600 BCE, making this quite a unique site. The megalithic limestone blocks were moved during a period in which the wheel had not yet been invented, and no metal tools were available on the island. The builders didn't have horses or oxen to help them move the stones, and the only idea researchers have come up with stems from small stone spheres found at the site. It's been suggested that the spheres were used as ball bearings for vehicles that were employed to transport the enormous blocks across the land. Yet, considering many of the limestone blocks weigh over 50 tons, the ball bearing theory seems highly unlikely. No scholar or researcher really has a complete theory on how or why such a temple was built during this ancient part of Malta's history. From trained archaeologists to pseudo-scholars, everyone has their own opinion on the origin of the site. Yet to this day, we are still unsure how these ancient temples were constructed. That is our video on the 9 unexplainable megalithic sites of the ancient world. If you'd like to see more videos on topics such as this one, 
subscribe to Magma Storm.